Everyone's morning, guys. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, man. Uh, how's everyone's morning, guys? Um, how's everyone been doing? You know, uh, festive seasons. Have you guys been managing? Uh, you know, the market is a bit uh, slow, but like, yeah. Hmm? Have you guys been managing? What are you looking forward to uh, next week? Like uh, probably we're going to form basically new year in terms of the market. So um, I trust everyone has watched the video that I posted on uh, on what do you call this thing uh, YouTube, right? So on YouTube, like I actually like went uh, a bit more in depth, uh, but like. Oh, that one was not on uh, thing. It was actually on gold. Yes, yes, it was actually on gold. Um, it was on gold. So this one basically like the dollar part of it, right? So you know. So I think like one of the things that are required, like especially like when we go into the next year, um, I think it's very important to actually like understand the relationship between the dollar and the stocks right so when i say the stocks i'm referring to your germany 30 or germany 40 um referring to your us 30 your s p 500 i'm referring to your uk 100 i'm referring to your um us 30 right you know so dow jones so i think like <clears throat> it's very important that actually a person like kind of like understand the relationship that the dollar has with it right so when we go into the next year um i'm going into next year uh with um expectation of seeing the dollar continue to drop in value but again um not going to neglect the probabilities of a further increase in price first before we can have any reduction in price right so for me like my projection for next year is that like uh beginning of the year the first quarter probably going into the second quarter we might actually end up having probabilities of seeing price pushing a bit further to the upside. This is where I'll probably be looking for possible shorting opportunities, right? But another thing that you should take into consideration is that like if I am looking for possible shorting opportunities at uh, $118, right? I have to also factor in that there is a probability that this high that was created might actually end up being liquidated so you must actually approach that with the mentality of if we're going to get something that is a bit deep because like if you can look at it if we are at 118 we're basically hovering around the previously formed swing high so once you start hovering around a previously formed swing high now it increases the likelihood of that person that particular swing uh swing high being liquidated so i think that is one of the things that you have to take into account right so but like again i'm probably looking for something like this 116 that's somewhere that i'll probably be looking at uh 118 is like max uh area that i would actually want to look at so i think that will probably be something that is worth looking at isn't it um we're going into a very uh it's going to be a very very um you know i can't say awesome year as of yet but it's going to be a very interesting year you know 
it's going to be a very interesting year but again remember that like um earlier on i actually did a live and then i actually spoke about the fact that like um during 2020 when COVID hit most of the people were forced into lockdown where everyone was uh forced into lockdown so when forced into lockdown what actually occurred is that you start seeing people that were hustling and able to hustle because like let's say maybe like you are a street vendor you sell things so you are unable to sell those things right right so now you are forced to be at home so there's those things called the stimulus checks when they were coming in so you had that certain amount of money that was coming in so remember that like if you have a stimulus check right when you cash it and then you have money in your bank account right so over a three months period it does look like you have a solid income isn't it so if over three let's say a person is a hustler we're not talking about an employed person we're talking about a person who hustle does not have a paycheck you know you don't get a salary on a monthly basis but now here comes this money that consistently come into your account right so technically speaking it gives the bank an impression that you have a substantial amount of money that is continuously coming into your account right so now it offers you an opportunity for you to start accumulating debt because now you can go to the bank and say you know what for the past three months there has been this money coming into my account so i would actually like to have a credit card right now you have a credit card and then you have a stimulus check that continuously coming into your uh, into your, your 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 account right so that credit card now you start using it and the credit card the amount of a uh, credit that you get it actually it's calculated based on the amount of money that continuously come into your account right so you've got a lot of people that were hustling now accumulating debt right those that were not used to debt they are accumulating debt they doing those things right so now once the stimulus check goes Basically, you have no money, but yet you still have a debt that is there. So now what is going to okay is that like um, you go into uh, what you call this thing, uh, not necessarily forfeit, but like you go into basically like say that put in a, in a position where you can't afford to pay the, uh, those debts, right? So when those situations okay, now the consumer debt right now actually like masses, they are a lot of them that are in debt right so we all know someone that has a credit card or am i lying and some of you that are watching this live might have a credit card right we all have we know someone that has a credit card right so you're asking a majority of us asking yourself how are these nine to five people able to afford such a luxurious life but it's actually like credit card debt that they actually finance in this because like right now if you're having a nine to five if you are an employee right so the salary or the wages does not increase at the same rate as the goods and services the prices how they increase so now you got to think or like how am i going to make ends meet because like the salary that i'm getting is getting depleted before the end of the month it's not support it's not supporting me throughout the course of the month right because some of us like let's say maybe now you live in in in, in Centen, right but like back then, Centen, the amount of money you have it afforded you a life in Centen. But now, based on the current situation, like before 2020, you could afford to live in Centen. But now, two years later, you can't afford to live in Centen based on your salary. You have to compensate with something so that you can still live where you want to live, right? So those things, you have to think about those things as well. So like a lot of people are going to um, default that's the neat thing that i needed default on their credits right so i think we need to look at it and you know so uh, the thing is that like obviously south africa we're not going to focus much on it though we are impacted by it but i'm saying that like a majority of uh america let's look at america because like that is the base uh currency for uh exchanges right when you buy you sell what what <coughs> So this is one of the things that are, is going to okay. So what I'm currently looking at, I'm looking for a possible push to the upside via the dollar. I don't know how they're going to do it, but you know. So um, around 118, that's where I will start considering taking those short positions. And then, you know, probably will be around the time where by majority of the people, um, you know, are, are defaulting on their 
on the, on their loans like your credit uh credit card you know you can't afford to pay your mortgage that's what they call it uh go america in south africa reggae uh the installment you can't afford to pay your bond you know so those are the situations so you can't you go to a point whereby you can't afford to pay for basic stuff you know so but i think like right now it's something that we're going to look at because like um the duration or the pace in which the u.s economy they the the the, the pace in which the u.s right um is actually like um what you call the u the u.s um uh, the the US actually the, the the pace in which they print money has reduced so people can't get money the way they used to get it right so those things are no longer there so I think like that's one of the things that you guys have to check that's why like I'm actually expecting a push to the upside before the drop in value it's going to be very interesting right so now this thing obviously it does automatically link to stocks right so for example right now if you start seeing the value of the dollar increasing in value automatically that does affect the value of the stocks so like you've got your nasdaq you've got all these things that are playing a key role in terms of like building the gdp of the u.s economy right so you start seeing the dollar rising in value obviously me as an investor i'm going to look for a better price so for me to get a better price the better price for me is in relation to the value of the dollar so i'm not going to buy something at 118 the minute you start seeing the dollar rise in value that means that the probability of the stocks meaning nasdaq us 30 um s p 500 the probability or the likelihood of seeing that decline in value are very high because like as an investor i would rather wait for the exchange to be favorable towards me before i do anything for example right now i'm going to give you a, a simple example right hundred dollars you could have funded with a hundred dollars if you are in south africa if you are in south africa uh come in march during march right if you're in south africa in march your hundred dollars was exactly 1.5 right so once the dollar in like with let's say maybe with a 1.5 you could have exchanged it at somewhere around like a 1.5 could have given you easily hundred dollars right now when the dollar increases in value in relation to you know the rent right so now you start to see that like when i try to deposit with the same 1500 rent it actually puts me in the 80 dollars right that means that like you have lost 20 dollars clean based on the value of the dollar right so what you want to see is that you want to see the dollar dropping in value, giving you at least a fighting chance. You understand? So like those things play a very key role, right? So what I want you guys to do is just like kind of like check um, those type of things. Like for example, now we're going to go on NAS 100, right? So when you go on NAS 100, something that is very nice to see, right? One month, right? So if you can look at this, you've got NAS 100 right nice 100 is actually playing around this area basically like the previous or oh, this year's low it's actually here so now this puts us in a probability of seeing this law being liquidated so now the question arises are we supposed to liquidate this law beginning of the year mid-year or what it's very interesting right and very interesting right it's very interesting so again now you have something like your us state this is something that is very interesting as well you have us state and then on top of you having the us state the us state is actually like in, based on the movement the us state s p 500 um germany 40 they are way ahead in terms of movement as compared to nasdaq so now means well us 30 s p 500 though these ones are ahead in terms of movement but nasdaq is always following behind it right so now the question arises how are we going to balance out these two things uh this okay actually this indices right so that we can see 
uh, movement that is relatively the same you know like you understand that like okay these things are moving at roughly the same pace or the same direction just that like you have different levels and this one is actually like way ahead and this one is a bit behind right so that's something that you actually have to check So it all depends it's something that we have to check but like um i think that it's going to be very interesting year guys it's going to be a very interesting year it's going to be a very interesting year so for now you know i think like we're still going to have a bit of a drop in price so now the question arises if we're going to have a drop in price on us state right if you're going to have a drop in price on us state we're going to have a drop in price on us 500 right we're going to have a drop in price on us 500 right so is that like uh now we're going to look at nasdaq as well again and then when we look at nasdaq um where we are currently residing the probability of us breaking below these levels are very very high so now the question arises is that like are we going to create a new yearly low before we can actually start rallying or are we going to just like chill there and then just kind of like push a bit further to the upside so that is something that is very nice to see, you know. So just preparation, man, for the upcoming year. It's very important. So now you've got the uh, gold as well. So on gold, um, if you can go and check the thing, I said that like um, whatever occurs throughout the course of the year, the most important thing is that we do not break above 1840, right? There's a reason why we shouldn't break above 1840. You know so because like if you do break above a certain area what it does is that it sets a precedent in terms of like what to expect the upcoming year so if we would have broken above 1840 this year if we would have broken above 1840 this year that means that like next year the probability of us taking out this high they would have increased so the fact that we failed to even tap into this level now it shows us that now the probability of that high being liquidated they are extremely low if they do okay they will okay but the probabilities are a bit low right so now that means that like whatever occurs throughout the course of next year what we will be looking forward to is a probability of a reduction in price so once we get that then we will be looking for you know so i think like um if we were to look at it from this perspective let's say that throughout the course of next year we don't actually like make any reduction in price let's just look at it from can we look at it from here let's see hmm yeah that's very cute though that's very very cool cool that's cool that is cool you know i'm learning this most slang guys you know it's cool it's awesome yeah this could be awesome <laughs> this could be awesome yeah this could be awesome you know so i think we might actually end up seeing something like that so i think like um 1950 next year 1950 hmm. if we were to go to the extreme we'll probably say like 2000 right per ounce so that would probably be like us going to the extreme and say, oh, this is what we're looking forward to. So I think that could actually provide us with good uh, thing to observe, right? So, but we'll see when that occurs. But <clears throat> that will probably be uh, something that is worth uh, checking out, right? Will be something that is worth checking out. So like next year, I don't think like there will be much, a bit, uh, much confusion per se. But hopefully we do get a bit of uh, volatile movements. I think that will probably be something that is very nice. So based on observation, I think that the likelihood of us seeing a reversal when it comes to a uh, thing might be actually on the third quarter for us to start seeing a reversal, like bearish movement for gold, provided that the volatility will be low. But if the volatility is high, then we might see it a bit earlier because remember that no matter how you feel as long as the market is still moving gradually making extensions based on uh small bodied candlesticks there's legitimately nothing much that you can do but to wait
So what we want to see is that we want to see engulfing candlesticks back to back. I think that will probably be something that's very chilled, isn't it? Because like the speed in which the market moves throughout the market basically reflects the amount of liquidity that is present, isn't it? So I think that will probably be something that's very cool. But like again, now you start seeing things such as this, like you get to see a bit of a consolidative thing. By the way, um, not I'm going to stress this, not even gonna stress it, but like one thing that I will tell you, ne, is that like no matter how you look at this, this is a consolidation. So the minute you start doing this, The minute you start doing this, the minute you start doing this, you are defining it differently. Right now, if like the minute you start doing this, you know the brain, net. Eh? The brain functions differently, guys. The brain functions differently. If you give it something to define, it will define it. Like the brain functions differently. If you give it a definition, it will define it the way you want it to, right? Because like based on these things, right? In practicality, you have to buy, you have to sell at this level. And you know, there's always some things like this. Like for example, if you can look at this from here, there's always going to be these things being given validity as in like it's a spike out, it's a what, what. It does not matter, but because like you do this, your brain already compartmentalize the information it puts it in a box then that means that whatever has occurred for the market to get here it no longer matters to you it's irrelevant that's how the brain works it will make it irrelevant and then it will make you focus on what do they call it an ascending channel they call it a is it a, a flag uh, it's not even a flag it's a pennant or what i i forgot these things even that's how, like, I forgot them. Is it a, a bullish channel? Mm, a bullish channel, I think, yeah. Ne? And this thing is regarded as a reversal chart pattern. It's regarded as a reversal chart pattern, isn't it? And that is the, the flaw about it, because, like, it you, you, you instantaneously think of a reversal every time. You instantaneously, whatever you are doing, the fact that you already define it means that Back to back, no matter what it does, you go, you're going to make multiple adjustments so that it can fit your narrative, you know. You're going to do that so that it can fit your narrative and say, like, okay, if it if you get here, the market spikes above, you'll make an adjustment so that you can accommodate that spike above. So, like you're already making it a definition, which is something that's going to end up being a bit of a problem, right? Because like you don't have to define it, right? You know, the thing is that, like, the simplicity of this by observation, let's say maybe, for example, right? If I'm looking for short positions at this level, right? If I'm looking for short positions at this level, here, I'm looking for short positions at that level. The question that you should be asking yourself is that, like, why are we looking for short positions at that particular level, right? It's because, like, when you make this thing the way it is, Ne, yet there, you know, you just look at it raw. You know, you just look at it raw. You don't add spices. You don't do nothing. You don't. You just look at it raw. And then you firstly have to establish. How the, how you got into this area. Like once you establish how you got into this area. Now, the only thing that you have to do is establish why is the market moving the way it's moving upon getting into that area. Why are you transitioning from being trending to choppy? Because you have to understand, don't wish up. So, like, that's the thing about the story, man. Right now, man, you, you, if, if you go to Avatar, Ways of the Water, Right, you go to Avatar, Ways of the Water. Right now, you go there, Baragata. You get into that and you watch it. You don't even understand why. Why is this person making 
at attacking these people, you don't get the story because you've never watched the first one. Because the first one sets a precedent for the second one, for the for the next one, because like you want to understand, hey, why is this guy running now? You have to see you like, okay, what is he? We understand, you get the story, right? And the story is very simple, like now, how you got into this area? Okay, I got into this area. Okay, why did the momentum all of a sudden slow down? It's not all of a sudden. Because like you had so many obstacles. One. Two. Three. And this, is, this was your fourth obstacle, isn't it? So you get to understand or like, no. This is how, we, you know, you get to understand that like, okay, okay, okay. You know, you understand or like, it's again. Hmm? You know? Meaning that like when a car is going up a hill, it consumes a lot of fuel as compared to when it's going down a hill. You know? Well, basically, the consumption of fuel, at some point you are forced to reduce the speed so that you can get to your destination. Right? So the same thing, like when you push through these things, remember that each and every time when a swing high, it's broken, the narrative, like let's say maybe the narrative was like bearish. Let's say it was 80 bearish and 20 bullish, right? You break above this level here. The bearish, the 80 bearish starts becoming 70 bearish. You you continue pushing, it goes to 60. You continue pushing, it goes to 50. You continue pushing, now the narrative slowly changes. Now it's no longer a bearish, but it's more of like, ah, the market has reversed. So now everyone starts focusing on the same narrative. Now it's bullish, it's bullish. It's until you break below a specific key area where now the narrative again again starts to shift again you know like it starts to shift as well now it becomes bearish 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 now one majority becomes bearish you know in terms of mentality it continues to go until that's the thing the reason why i say that like i'm not knocking everyone down but the thing is that like trend lines themselves the way they are drawn, they are drawn based on something has already happened. That means that there is nothing you can do until that something happens. Like there is nothing. So for example, right now, if this movement does not form, a very, a, this channel does not exist. The only way it exists is because something has to form. If something does not form, it does not form. So that is the problem because now what it is saying is that like you have to wait for you could have taken short positions here for example you could have taken short positions here you could have taken short positions here but like no you have to wait for one let's say maybe it's this one here it's here so with this you have to wait for one two to form first that means this is where you have to take short positions you cannot take short positions here because like by the rules you are not supposed to do that but like how you let this one two and then you enter here because like one and two you already missed so let's say for example you wanted to take long position let's not even take about taking shots let's say you wanted to take long positions right so if you wanted to take short positions technically speaking based on the trend line this is not the secondary test this is the secondary test so that means like one two this is where you actually take your long positions you know so like that itself it kind of like Puts you in a situation because like if you are here you're actually more in more exposure to actually be liquidated than as compared to when you are here or when you are here so like that's one of the things that like you kind of like have to check them because like sometimes they lag behind actually most of the time they actually lag behind and that is a bit of a challenge because like depending on technical tools to actually validate how you're supposed to move it kind of puts you in a wrong footing as well. So, you know, like you just have to think about that as well. 
it's nice but like think about it you know no pressure guys um everyone trades differently i know that but like sometimes just kind of like think about certain things look at them from a different perspective and then ask yourself like why would i do that that's like you waiting on the robot it's it just it just turned green but you're chilling you say no i'm waiting it turns orange and then that's when you start okay let me move until you realize that it's right sometimes it's right and then you try to force yourself in and you know then it's an accident you know so like sometimes just kind of like look at those things from there so for me right now if i'm looking for short positions around this levels here like let's say maybe next year it says 1840 maybe it spikes up it goes to 1860 1880 the thing is that like i'm consistently looking for short positions to push price to the downside because clearly if you're going to push a bit further to the upside there must be a serious amount of thing but like again that's the beauty of it now that's the beauty of it so the beauty of it is that like now this thing that is called a a, a bullish channel or what 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 now this thing it sets a foundation of a consolidation and this is the beauty of it right so because now you know look at the beauty of this right um the beauty of it of this right what it does is that like it's going to get people into the situation right this is the beauty of it so the beauty of this what it does is that it's going to get people positioning themselves and then looking for short positions that means that any time you detest bearish they're taking short positions short positions some are here buy positions buy positions so you just need one you don't even need to make a deeper retracement right you just need to do this you don't need much you just need to do this the minute you do this those that have taken short positions the minute they see the uh, lower trend line the bullish trend line the lower one the bottom one breaks they go in to add more position let's say they already have positions here they go in to add more positions upon the breakout and then the thing is that like you're going to give them a nice retest so you're going to give them a breakout and a young retest and then drop a bit so get them more interested in taking short positions and those that you have liquidated here get them more interested in taking those long positions uh, take, like meaning after they liquidate get them interested in taking those buy positions uh, sell positions as well so now you're changing the narrative right so minute you change the narrative you make a bit of a drop in price so almost entirely most of the people are committed in taking short positions then once they take in short positions because this is still a consolidative state meaning that even if it gets here this entire region is still a consolidative state all you have to do is give them something that is roughly the same as what they have done here you give them something that is roughly the same it might be a very small thing but you must start it from here you know give them something that is roughly the same even if you can spike it can even come and then spike somewhere here but like we want it here but you don't want it in the form of it but just give them something some will look for long some will do and then you just spike a bit below and then you continue with the rally so now you already have majority of the people committing to taking short positions so once you have majority of people committing to taking short positions now you have the necessary amount of liquidity to continue with your rally can even go to where it, it's supposed to go but the thing is that like it has to deal with these things that is located here so that is something that is a very it's a beaut right because people fail to see that this is a consolidation they attach things to it a meaning to it so that's why i say that like we can actually even end up going a bit further to the upside without even um without even breaking uh one without even breaking below like without even pushing down to the downside it can just legitly move sideways and then continue with the rally because like the main objective of a consolidation is to kind of like um look at it from it's it's a filling station man that's why it's a filling station 
everything you know no matter how fast how how how, how much you, like, you want to continue with the journey once we hit the once the, the the car tells you that hey man i don't have enough fuel to continue or to carry on with this journey you have to stop because if you don't stop at some point you'll be forced to stop so like basically just say take a breather go get your, yourself a red bull pour petrol check the tires check the oil check the water and then let's continue you know so that's basically what's occurring here you just take a breather you know and then you continue with your journey so it does not necessarily have to be a bit deeper it can just simply play around this area and then continue with the run because like at the end of the day the fact that it's still consolidating it shows you the probability unlike a certain point like for example right now you know so when something is consolidating it gives you an opportunity for you to see it continue to run right so like for example unlike you know there are certain things that are a bit that are a bit deep. I don't. Uh, there, there are certain ones that are a bit deeper. So, like, rem remember again, like the duration of a consolidation also does play a key role, right? So, for example, like when you get into this area here, this duration it's not as intense as the duration where uh, here, here, you know. So, like, I think that's one of the things you have to look for. So, but like, I think like beginning of the year. Uh, definitely might be something that's worth noting so if you've got that channel and that what what just kind of like minds a bit man because like i think like beginning of the year even if we don't make a drop then but this high we're going to take it out there is no way that we're going to leave this unchecked before we come to a drop so i think like it can even start increasing without even dropping unless if you get that strong um aggressive movement then that can be a bit different you know but like yeah man it's not really that deep so now the problem is this you see this one it's a, it's a problem because like um first of all first of all this is just too nice you know um i actually like send this guys i'm so i'm sure you guys some of you saw it right some of you saw you saw it right some of you saw it some of you chose not to see it but hey guys now i'll just share what i can man so how you deal with this it's entirely up to you man you know so sometimes that's why you can actually like you can you can take a donkey to the river but you can't force it to drink you know so i will send things I will share things, I will, but I can't force you to consume anything, you know. That's the beauty of it, the beauty of life. You know, like even even in, in, in the Bible, God gave us free will. That means that the, you, have the, you have a choice to actually live your life according to the gospel or not. It's entirely up to you. That's the power that we're, we have been bestowed, the blessing and the curse, the ability to make your own decisions, make your own choices, live your life the way you want it. You know so right now you get something like this right so actually like i looked at it from this area here let's look on four hours so on four hours man you know i looked at it from this perspective and i said that like guys um whatever you're doing man um 1840 won't hold the price right so this was 1840 and and its ability not to hold the price I say 1840, was it 1880? I said 1880 won't hold the price or 1840, whatever it is. So it, it won't hold the price, right? It, it won't hold the price. And the reason why it won't hold the price is too obvious, guys. Come on. Some of the things you don't even have to. It's just too obvious. So this thing can't hold the price. Why? Simple, obvious. So like the fact that you're failing to see these things means that there is something that you're omitting, you know, you're omitting something that is very, very valuable because the minute you start compartmentalizing the market, the minute you go into miss things, the minute you start attaching definition to a consolidation, you go into miss things. The minute you start at drawing things that are unnecessary, you go into miss things. It's impossible not to miss things. Hmm? because there's certain attachment you're making to these things and and that's the beauty of it you know you know the most 
challenging thing um, when it comes to any person, right? Especially people that are now past the age of 25. Once you get to your mid at 20s, it's like the brain kind of hardens. That means things that you used to believe in, things that you believe in, like things you, you used to believe in or things that you were believing in until you got into that age, they kind of get cemented. You know, cement, when you cement something, it's actually granite. They become, what is the strongest metal? A uh, Vibranium. <laughs> I know it's in theory. Like it's like your brain becomes vibranium. Nothing enters. You can take those hammer, hit it and hit it, but your brain becomes vibranium. You can't do anything. And wait, let's look at it. Like, you know, so the only thing that you can use to shape your brain, regardless of whether it's vibranium, vibranium can be shift, can be sh uh, molded and made into different things. You know, the only way that you can mold that is through study. There's nothing that softens the brains more than that in book guys i'm not going to lie like when you read like your brain it's no longer that hard like it gets softened it become it becomes soft it absorbs it it, it absorb it absorbs it becomes you know it just allows things you know so feed it so that it can up you know it a brain it's a it's, a, it's an organ that is a very curious organ 